Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. Sure. Amen. We are called to be a people that walk differently in this world. And when I use that term walk, which is a biblical expression, it's speaking about lifestyle that we are called to have a most different lifestyle from those that do not have a new covenantal relationship with God. So as we look at the Word of God, we see that in that day, the day of Moses, we see that there were many temptations in this world for even the people of God. And today, likewise, we are living in a world that is full of temptation and we need to guard ourselves that we don't agree with the world, but that we agree with God. And to do that, we need his revelation. And that's what we're going to encounter in this passage of scripture. So look with me to the book of Leviticus, Sefer Vayikra, the book of Leviticus and chapter 20. Let's begin in verse 1 where it says and the lord spoke to moses saying verse 2 to the children of israel you shall say now the next thing we have is an idiom we're talking about every individual but what does it say in hebrew ish ish which means man man and how we understand that is every man doesn't matter who we're talking about these words are true for all of humanity so every man from the children of israel and not just from the children of israel but notice what it says and from the sojourner that is one who dwells in israel which uh, will give his seed meaning his child that's implication to who to molech now who is molech Molech is a pagan deity, which means he is nothing. And we simply see how through these false deities, we could use another word, these idols, these false religions, that Satan is served. And that's why when we look at this again, look at this text where it says, everyone from the children of Israel, whether they be in the implication is Jewish, or whether they be non-jewish but happens to dwell in the land of israel everyone who gives his seed and it says who will do this who will give his seed meaning his child to molech mot yumat which means he will die death and the implication is he will certainly die meaning and we'll see how he dies if we keep reading in this passage where it says Am Ha'aretz, the people of the land, what will they do? They will stone him with a stone. And the reason why, and most Bibles don't do this, but the reason why stone at the end, they will stone him with a stone. Instead of they will stone him with stones, the scripture is singular. So many English translations and others put stone in the plural. But the reason why it does not is that each person in the community was supposed to take a stand against this one and be personally involved in this stoning this judgment and this makes it very clear to us that our god is a god of judgment if we are going to encounter the word of god without recognizing that there's a consequence from disobedience if we don't recognize that if we won't acknowledge that then it's really not a a worthwhile thing to do to study god's will we need to approach him as our judge and that's what we're going to see very clearly in this passage of scripture so it says in the middle of verse 2 he will certainly be put to death 
and the people of the land they will stone him with a stone look now to verse 3 and i will give my face and this could also be translated i will set my face against that man and i will cut him meaning cut him off it's a punishment he will be cut off but god's doing it i will cut him off from the midst of his people meaning this because of idolatry that individual he is no longer part of the children of israel can we say that differently he is no longer part of god's people he is removed now in this day and age one primarily was part of god's people through a birthright through a heritage being part of the children of yaakov jacob or if they were brought into the children of israel through faith or as we saw here the ger asher gar ba'aretz the sojourner who dwells in the land they also because that they're in the land it is responsible they are responsible to follow these same teachings these same commandments so it's very very inclusive if you are in the land you have to obey the word of god and it says again why they're punished look at the middle of verse three for from his seed meaning his children his offspring he gave to Molech this false god why did he do it well remember what i said such a behavior shows a influence of of demonic activity of satanic presence anytime there is and hear this carefully anytime that there is false worship you can be assured that the enemy is present and that's why we see in this passage of scripture in verse 3 where it says on account of why did he do this on account that that he profaned or defiled would be a better word defiled my sanctuary and now it says to profane my holy name and what is name synonymous with character so this one did what he did in order to demonstrate his opposition against two things against the the nature of god where it says in this verse look again to profane my sanctuary meaning this against the name of god the character of god and the proper worship of god one of the benefits and this is huge one of the benefits from worshiping god is this worshiping god properly will assist you in recognizing god his character his attributes his way or we could say discerning his will and therefore we see in the second part of this verse let's read it all what did he want to do on account that he would defile my sanctuary and profane my holy name now again what we see is a principle and that's this when we profane the name of god the motivation from the enemy doing that is this there is power attached to the name of god when the name of god is profaned by someone or even by his people what happens the community is not going to receive and be a recipient of that power it hinders god's work why because god won't work in an unholy or defiled location or place let's move on to verse 4 now here there is a a statement what if the community just ignores what this one is doing look at verse four but if the people of the land will ignore and that means their their eyes ignore uh what has happened and it says from that man that gave his seed to Molech if this is ignored if this isn't dealt with that they did not look at the end of verse 4 that they did not kill him 
Now, some would say for this activity, this is a very harsh response. Well, understand something. Do not be or make yourself to be God's judge. That is not a place that any man could arrive. God is not judged by anyone, certainly not uh, flesh and blood, meaning the dirt of the earth. That's what we are. We need to recognize God as the creator. God as holy and righteous and perfect and transcending all of his creation. He is different and unique. And therefore, we could never stand in judgment of him. That is a, a blasphemous thought. And that's why it says here, if someone ignores, and that's how we can understand this, ignore from among the people of the land this man and what he did by giving his seed to Moloch, that they did not put him to death. If that's happened, realize what's going to be the response. God himself is going to get involved in this. And he's not going to sit idly by. He's going to do it. Why? Look at verse 5. He says, And I will place my presence against that man and against his family. And I will cut off him and all of the ones who play the harlot. And playing the harlot is idolatry. All those who played the idol after him to to harlot after Moloch from the midst of their people. Now, what he's saying is this. I'm going to get involved and set myself against that one, and not just that one, that family. Why is that there? Well, if you look closely at some of the commentators, they make a very good point, and that is this. Certainly his family knows and therefore his family needs to be the one that comes first against him brings his sin and make it public and lead the community to exercise what's called here to do and that is to stone him to death do not ignore the sin in the camp now again recently I was in Northern Europe and also Western Europe. And one of the things, and this is tragic, but it's a fact, one of the things that the believing community is wrestling with is something that we're going to deal with towards the end of our time together. And I'm speaking about homosexuality. And it is shameful that much of the body of believers, if we can really even call them that, are confused and they are compromising compromising what the word of god says to the the disappointment and we could say the anger of god look if you would to to the next verse verse six where it says the soul that means the very essence of that person the person who turns to and now we're dealing with something that's clearly idolatrous and this is the soothsaying. This is this view that you can discern supernaturally your future. And also turns to familiar spirits. For what? For the purpose of playing the harlot after them. He says again, I will set my face against that, that soul. And I will cut him off from the midst of of his people now why is god doing that very simply these individuals are bringing spiritual pollution into the community we cannot allow that and there's many implications of that and that is when someone is sharing something that's false we are called in fact i would argue we are commanded to lovingly and humbly Did you hear those two words? When someone is teaching something false, love is not just sitting idly and quietly by and saying nothing. You are able to speak lovingly, kindly, respectfully to another person simply saying, what you're sharing is biblically incorrect.
We need to take that public stand because those who may have heard, because this one was speaking public, because others may have heard, we need to correct also in public. But again, in love, in gentleness, and in humility. That's what he's talking about. Look, if you would, to to verse 6 once more where it says, Hanefesh, meaning that soul, and we can understand it, that person which turns to this soothslain and also to familiar spirits to prostitute and that's literally what it says to play the harlot after them i will set my face against that one and i will cut that one off from the midst of his people verse seven now in verse seven we have what we should be concerned about and that's this being sanctified so let me ask you a question is that something that you pray for do you pray daily you ought to god sanctify me according to your purposes according to your presence what is sanctified it comes from a word holy and it's simply make me to be holy now we need to understand holy correctly i've said many many times there is a relationship between holiness and and i hope you know what the answer is the purposes of god so when you say sanctify me what you're saying is set me apart for your purposes i want to do your will look at verse verse 7 and sanctify yourselves that you shall be holy why for i the lord your god am what i the lord your god am holy so we're supposed to be like god god is holy what does that mean he's always committed to the right thing he always does the right thing and we need to show and manifest a commitment to the right thing what is the right thing we know always what the right thing is it is god's will and we need to pray for that discernment so that we make wise decisions but we're always 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 called to be committed to the will of god the purposes of god that's who we become in messiah therefore he says look at the next verse verse 8 and you shall keep my statutes and you shall do them why i am the lord who sanctifies you so we see a perfect example god sanctifies us so that we can keep and do his standards (laughs) that we can fulfill his instruction to us and we need to be people that pray continuously for the strength for the insight for the submissive uh, heart and established heart that we cling to the purposes of god that we recognize that's what we are called to do we're not called to give orders to god we're called to listen to his commandments to us and his commandments he doesn't need for us to do them he's not going to suffer if we don't do his commandments we need to do his commandments because simply they are the right thing to do and there are blessings attached eternal blessings attached to those commandments ready to be received when you carry them out look now to our next verse verse 9 again we see that expression ish ish for every man which and we would say god forbid every man that would curse his father or his mother what should happen this one shall surely be put to death mot yamut this one shall certainly be put to death why his father and his mother he cursed his blood be upon him meaning he's going to suffer he and he alone for what he has done now someone will say well what about his wife if he's married if he's put to death won't she suffer yes but but god's not the cause of causing her to suffer what's causing her to suffer because her husband was put to death was simply his own idolatrous practice the fact that he would curse his mother or his father so again look at verse 9 for every man who would curse his father 
or his mother so certainly be put to death why his father and his mother he curse his blood be upon him now that is a very important principle his blood be upon him he cursed his parents he did it we know what the punishment is therefore his blood meaning his accountability be upon his own head now this has tremendous implications and that is this when for example a a thief goes in to rob a bank and he takes hostages and the police set up a a a barricade and they have perhaps a sharp shooter waiting to kill that bank robber robber well if he begins or thinks that he's going to harm some people then they need to shoot and put him out of commission do not let him operate and do and achieve what he wants to achieve and if he's put to death very simply his blood be upon his own hands why he created the situation the the, the that man didn't wake up this morning that sharpshooter with the desire to kill him he probably didn't even know that individual but because of this one's action he is put to death and that's what he means his blood be upon his own hands now let's look at the next verse verse 9 for a man that will curse his father or his mother he shall be put to death because his father and his mother he cursed the blood be upon him now verse 10 a man who will blaspheme uh, actually it's a word for commit adultery ni'uf let's look at again verse 10 any man who will commit adultery with the wife of of another man that man who has played the harlot what does it say with a woman of his neighbor this one shall certainly be put to death for i am the one who who punishes adultery or adulterer or the adulteress so god's not making the distinction here if it's a woman who does it she's punished if it's a man he's punished a god of equality are there differences yes indeed between male and female but those differences do not mean that there's a less of equality one compared to the other we can't make that that case that's not what the word of god says look now to to verse 11. every man that will lie and this is in a sexual way every man that will lie with the wife of his father what has this one done the nakedness of his fathers he has revealed and he shall certainly be put to death both of them and their blood be upon themselves on their own blood which means this because they did that action whatever happens to them, that punish that is being being commanded here it's not that we did it they chose that punishment when they did that act so they're guilty and this is the righteous punishment for such an individual verse 12 and every man that will lie with his daughter and this would be his daughter-in-law uh he will be certainly put to death both of them why because they have done tevil and tevil here has to do with uh that which is inappropriate that which is displeasing to god because it goes beyond his parameters it violates the borders that god has set up this is a huge thing we need to realize those borders are for our own benefit so god says look carefully at the text he says in verse verse 12 every one who will lay with the daughter-in-law shall certainly be put to death both of them why he has done impurity both of them blood is upon them verse 13 our last verse now a few minutes ago i said that in my opinion the body of believers we can make that real simple the church is in a spiritual free fall meaning this god's standards are up here and we're falling rapidly away from them and one issue which is so surprising to me 
because the word of god is so clear as we'll see in a moment but one issue that stands out in my mind as a most easy thing to discern that it's wrong it goes against the created order what is natural and the word of god even says that that it goes against what is natural but look at the verse or last verse verse 13 And every man that will lie with a male as he lies with a woman. What is that? What is when a man lies with a man? To'eva, which means an abomination. He has done both of them. And both of them, because they were part of it, both of them shall be put to death. That's what the scripture is revealing to us. Both of them shall certainly be put to death for they have done an abomination and once again their blood be upon themselves now before we conclude there's one more point related to this that i want to bring up and that is we will see see very shortly and it's not that i have some special uh, knowledge or ability to know the the future i certainly do not But we will see because of reports that I'm hearing from media companies and such very soon. It is going to be that if you don't affirm what God says is an abomination, if we don't affirm that, what's going to happen? Well, we are going to be taken off. These are going to be the new terms of service. And failure to embrace this is going to be viewed as hate speech. And that's just simply where the world is going. I want you to see two words that appear here. Look, if you would, to this book of of Leviticus, book of Leviticus, and chapter 20, where it says these words. Chapter 20, where it says, verse 12, Every man which lies with his daughter-in-law shall certainly be put to death, both of them, meaning the daughter-in-law and the man why tevel asu tevel is something which is is scandalous something that is inappropriate something that is sinful but it also says in the next verse that such behavior is also we have the word to eva is an abomination and i think that's a very important word for us to use an abomination a very strong adjective that God is using to describe it is abominable that's what he's saying an abomination is an act which is abominable to God and brings about a quick response from him upon the community so we have things here that God is telling us for our own good and what's happening is this the world's going one way God's going another The problem is this, that the congregation of the redeemed believers are going the wrong way. They're not walking with God. Why? In order to walk with God, you need to understand His Word. You need to understand what the Scripture tells us, and not just understand it up here, but remember, having our hearts established that we might know wisdom and understanding so that we do the right thing. And when we're committed to the Word of God and we apply God's Word to our life, the outcome of that is indeed righteous living, meeting God's standards, doing His will, and that's what we're called to be, obedient. And we never want to move away from that. Obedience is a good thing. We're going to see that we're going to be challenged by the world. We'll be called all types of names. That's okay. The question is, am I going to be obedient? Am I going to agree with God? What God calls an abomination, am I too good to call it an abomination or am I going to compromise? When you compromise, you're compromising your power, your anointing, and your ability in the future to receive other sources of revelation. While well, close with that, until next week, may God richly bless you. Shalom. From Israel. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. 
Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel. Shalom from Israel.